So I always have this idea of creating my own synthesizer model and be able to modify it as much as I need it, including the possibility to fully control it using my hardware sequencer from Korg or a keyboard with CV outputs like this Arturia MIDI keyboard or another module that sends CV to control pitch or gates to create rhythms, like these mutable instruments marbles that my friend Ipsu gave me and I never give it back. That's when I find Electrosmith's patching it. Patching it is a module that includes a DSP platform called DAISY, which features a high fidelity 24 bit 96 kHz sample rate stereo audio codec. In simple words, Electrosmith patching it is a blank module where we can install whatever audio firmware we program using, for example, C, Pure Data, or Maxim SP Gen, the one that I use here, and use it as a musical instrument without the computer. So, in this video, I will show how I adapted a very interesting Max Patch instrument called Cross Feedback Fakes Modulation, created by Graham Wakefield and Gregory Taylor, in order to be used in the patching it module and to fully integrate it into my Eurorack system. The module will include a voltage per octave CV input so we can control pitch with an external hardware, a trigger input that will activate an envelope so we can make it sound and also many parameters will be controlled using knobs or CV input so we can personalize the sound the way we want it. So, first let's prepare the model. To embed a max gen patch into our DAISY submodel, first we need to install a software platform called Oopsie. To know a little bit more about Oopsie and how to install it, I'm leaving a couple of links in the description of the video. It's quite straightforward actually. Once you have Oopsie installed, it, you will be able to open the examples provided as well as the Oopsie templates. So let's begin with the module. We are starting from this super exciting patch which I found it in the book Generating Sound and Organizing Time, written by the previously mentioned authors. This max patch has two oscillators that modulate each other, creating a very interesting feedback phase modulation. Okay, so let's begin. I open up this specific patch that I wanted to adapt, but you can actually use any of the gen examples provided in Max and adapt it in the same way. Now let's listen to the original patch in Max MSP. <laughs> okay, that's great. So, if you have installed Oopsy properly, you will be able to see the Oopsy templates. Let's open the Oopsy patch SM template. The original patch works great on Max, but we need to write this in the new patch SM template, with the requirements needed to make it functional. The Oopsy template will help us to compile the patch and flash it in the memory of the DAISY submodel. We can see that both patches have a gen object inside so we can copy the content of the gen object from the original patch and pass it into the gen object of the template patch. Now we can close the original patch and let's zoom in. To adapt a max patch into the template, we have to be very careful with the names of the parameters. The DAISY is a patch requires that every parameter has a special name and number, so once we flash it, each parameter will correspond to the specific knob, input or output of the module. Let's take a look at the parameters of our module. IN1 and 2 are audio inputs, then we have parameter CV1 until parameter CV8. 1 to 4 correspond to the knobs, 5 to 8 to the CV inputs. Finally, there are two gate inputs. Then we have audio output 1 and 2. OUT3 is our only CV output, and OUT4 is the module's LED. Finally, we have two gate outputs. So now we need to rename the parameters of the patch past it to the names of the template. That's the easiest way to set up the gen object. There are seven parameters that we need to rename. Parameter Hertz is the main pitch of the patch. And as I said before, I want to be able to control the tuning with an external hardware. So we will rename it parameter CV8, which is the CV input number eight. This patch has two phasers and they modulate each other. The pitch of each phaser can be controlled from parameter modulator 1 and 2. I want to control modulator 1 with knob 2, so let's rename parameter CV2. Modulator 2 will be controlled by the CV input number 7, so I can modulate it with another module of my Eurorack, like uh, with an LFO, for example. Parameter index 1 and 2 control the amount of modulation between them. The number of knobs of my module are limited, so I decided to control both index with the knob 1. 
So let's rename it parameter CV1 and connect both cables to it. Before each output there is a filter. They are independent between them, but again I will use the same knob to control both. So let's rename it parameter CV3. So again, this object will control both filters. Let's go back to parameter CV8, which control the main pitch of the patch. There is an important issue here, which is the main reason why I am doing this video. CV8 will receive voltage from an external instrument or module. The rule says that when controlling pitch with voltage, every time we increase one volt, the pitch will increase one octave. But pitch is a logarithmic scale, and we are using a linear scale to control it. So, more complicated math is required to translate from the linearity of one voltage per octave and the logarithmic scale of pitch. If you want to read the full explanation of this math, you may find it in Gaylor Dewell website. I will leave a link in the description, but for now the easiest way to write this function will be 55 multiplier by the frequency multiplier to the power of open brackets volts plus the adjustment close brackets. 55 is the lowest la note that the module will play. The frequency multiplier is always 2. Volts are obviously the volts that the module will receive from other hardware when trying to control the pitch and the adjustment is 0.25 in order to adjust the lowest LA note to a DO note instead. Again, Gaylord D will explain it much better than me, so take a look at his website. So how we write that equation in MAX? Well, we need to raise 2 to the power of the input voltage, but first we need to add 0.25 to that voltage. We create the plus 0.25 object, and then exp2 object raises 2 to the power of the input that we connect. Then we need to multiply the result by 55, and that's it. We connect both outputs as they were connected before. Before checking that everything works fine, let's specify the minimum and the maximum amount of this parameter. The daisy submodel can receive from minus 5 to 5 volts in each input, but the sequencer and the keyboard goes from 0 to 10 volts, so we can set up a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 5. To check out what we are doing is right, let's connect an out 3 here and check it in the main patch. If it is correct, when we input 0 volts, the output should be 65.40. When we input 1, 130.81. 2 261.63, 3 523.25, 4 1046.5, and 5 2093. Now that I make sure it's working fine, I will erase the out 3. Next, let's add a minimum and maximum to each parameter. I will do it according to what I already tested, and I know that it works fine to me. But feel free to change it as much as you want it. Also, erase the original out 1 and 2 and rename the out 1 and 2 pm. Oh, I'm sorry, here I should have left a space. So, for the last part of this patch, what we want to do is to add an envelope. So, when we receive a trigger, the envelope will start. So, I will import an envelope that I find in the same book and paste it in our gen patch. But we need to twist it a little bit to make it work in our module. So the first thing that we need to do is to take out the second output here. We don't need that part of the envelope. And basically what we need to do is to make the envelope amplify the signal coming from the outputs according to the attack and decay time that we set up. Um, by the way, this is a two steps envelope, so that means that we only have an attack and a decayed stage. So to do so, we have to add a multiply object and connecting it in the inputs the scene outputs and also the output coming from the envelopes. Then the outputs of the multiply objects are going directly to the out 1 and 2. Now connected to the clip object we can see both the rise and fall time of the envelope. We still have one knob left so let's control the fall time which works as a decay with the knob 4. For doing so we need to change the name of the parameter to parameter CV4. 
And additionally, let's set a minimum and a maximum amount. So when the knob goes fully to the left, it's going to be only one millisecond and fully to the right, 1,500 milliseconds, which is 1.5 1 seconds. For the rise time, I will add a fixed amount of 10 milliseconds. Also, I thought it was important to make the LED blink every time the module receives a gate input. So let's connect here the out 4 CV out 2 which is the output for the LED of the module, connected directly to the trigger that it's coming in. Finally, it is recommended to add these OOPSI control smooth objects after every parameter. These objects help to smoothen the rate speed changes coming from the inputs, and after the gate input, we should add the OOPSI gate minimum with an amount of 3. Um, the full explanation of uh, why is this important can be found in the object oopsie suggestions that it is in the template that we just opened. Here I think I forgot to rename the gate input, so let's change it to parameter gate1 and let's clean up a little bit all this that it looks like a mess and that's it, let's try it. Let's make sure that the parameters have at least some value like here in CV1, CV2 and CV3 some 1. Let's put the volume up and every time we press the gate, there you go, we can listen to the sound. If we move some of the parameters, the changes, and CV4 is the release. As you can see, now it's longer. So now the final step, let's flash the patch in the module. We'll make sure that we connect the USB cable and we have to press these two very uncomfortable buttons so we make it flash ready. In this pop-up menu, select patch SM if you are using the same model and below that, please choose 96 kilohertz. If everything is fine, we press the big button and it will take some seconds to flash it into the submodel memory. There you go, it says flash. So now let's check out how the module sounds. Okay, it works perfectly well. We are sending gate, CV and modulation, CV signals to control the module. Everything seems to be fine. So, thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. If you are interested in more videos like this or in my music, you can subscribe to the channel and share it and all that. Bye. Thank you.